Hey everybody, welcome to drive through review number 700. Today we're going to take a look at the Catacombs box set for the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry skirmish game. Now this is a kind of a standalone slash expansion box set, so if you're new to the game and you want to jump right in, this will kind of get you everything you need to, to play the game, or if you've already played uh, some Warcry before, this will give you kind of two different game modes. You get the Catacombs mode, which is the namesake, and that's kind of a dungeony sort of underground sort of layer with some its own kind of terrain rules. But it does give you some above ground terrain with the other side of the board and some terrain to go with that. And you get the two different uh, war bands as well to use. So I've already done a review for it. I'll put a link in the description below talking about the mechanics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, largely, the mechanics are the same. Uh, there's some new modes and some new campaign bits and stuff like that. So I'm gonna kind of dive down. I got everything assembled, painted up, have a chance to play a couple of games of it. And I'll kind of give you kind of a component overview kind of thing, and then jump back up here to kind of tell you my thoughts on the box set uh, in general. So first, real quick, you get a copy of the core book in the, the Catacombs box set. This is the exact same core book that you got in the original starter set and that you can buy separately online. Nothing changes here. And one thing they have not done, which is a little bit of a disappointment, is update this with some of the FAQ and some of the errata and stuff like that, which is relatively significant. Uh, it would have been nice to have kind of had, you know, kind of an updated rule book inside here as well. Uh, and you get a separate rule book here for the Catacombs. And you get kind of your typical stuff, a little bit of lore and background, some cool art and everything, as well as some uh, pictures of some of the miniatures that are painted that come with the set, which I'll show you in a minute, and some other scenic kind of things. And then you get the rules here for the dungeon terrain and so on. Now, to set up a scenario, if you remember, you typically had like decks of cards that you would deal out and then kind of randomize your terrain setup, randomize your victory objectives and all that kind of stuff. Here, there's, you, don't, you don't get any cards in the box, but you do get some sort of cards printed out here uh, that you can kind of roll off on. And then you see you've got victory objectives there and so on and twists. And then here you've got sort of the layout and setup for the above ground uh, missions that you can do here. Now you also get here uh, these quests. So you get the quest lines for the two war bands uh, that come in the box. So you get two quest lines kind of per uh, war band there. You can see some of these have the above ground uh, ones here and then some of these take place in the dungeons and then here we got some more. But then you also do get some quests for everybody else. So these are called faded quests and these are sort of generic quests because you have sort of your faction specific quests in a game of war cry and that's just for that faction. But then you have faded quests which pretty much anybody can go and take on and they, and they work the same way. So like you see this one has like uh, one convergence quest scenario for the above ground and then two under underground and so on. And this one has two above and then one under and so on like that. So I'm gonna kind of show you what all you get in the box component wise. I apologize for the glare on this side. I'll fix that in just a second. Here you've got the one side of the board, which is the underground map with all the little terrains and doors and things. And here you can see the shadow stalker minis out here on that side, but you also get all of this outdoor terrain. Now here you can see there's two separate boards. You don't get two boards, but this sort of art on this board that you see, this comes from the original starter set. That's on the back side of this board over here. So you just flip the board over and then you can either kind of play outdoors or play indoors. And I scatter around here some of these uh, signs of flame figures. I just wanted to kind of zoom in and give you kind of a quick sense of what an amateur paint job looks like on this stuff. So here I've got this terrain all painted up. I have, uh, you know, all the figures painted up and so on. A lot of these guys are on fire or deal with fire and so on. And typically kind of in comparison to the shadow stalkers, these guys are a little bit tougher. They've got a couple of less figures for their war band, but they're slightly more melee focused, although some of their special abilities and things that you can activate with those initiative dice that you roll, uh, you can get some ranged effects uh, out of them there. But this is just kind of how this kind of terrain looks. And so there you go, that's how that works. Now here you can see the Shadow Stalkers over there. There's a couple of different terrain pieces that are new to the game, obviously with this kind of setup here. Uh, the first of which are these doors here. So you have kind of these doors that players will set up at the beginning of a match. And some of them are open like this and they have some cool little skulls and things on them. Sometimes you'll set out a closed door like so. And as a part of setup, you can see these small gaps here. Players will take turns putting out 
uh, these different doors. You're kind of sealing off different areas. Maybe there'll be objectives or something that you want uh, to sort of have a bottleneck or a choke point, force them to kind of go around and so on. You can, as part of deployment, also put out different terrain features. One of them, which could be a lever here to open the door. So you can have that and then you can put down the open door version of that. And so now they can get through there. And you've also got some bridges here. You have kind of these two sturdy bridges over there, as well as these two kind of wooden uh, weaker bridges on either side there. And so if you actually move your figure here and stop at any point during your movement, you have to roll to see if maybe that bridge doesn't collapse or get weaker. And if it does, then you'll of course fall into the pit and then your character will be immediately removed from play there. Now, typically your characters are gonna come in from the edge of the board here, and then you're gonna deploy your different like uh, dagger, sword, and shield groups uh, from uh, within three inches of these places here. And they're all over the board here. So let me just zoom out kind of haphazardly here. So you can see over here, you've got entrances. And the maps and the setups will kind of help you with that and where you put objectives and the different conditions and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to look at some of these other terrain features, which kind of really are kind of the crux of the game here. So this thing, if you one of the players decides to put it out, that can also be an entrance uh, in later rounds. So what happens is you usually put out two of your groups and then after the second round, the beginning of the third round, then your other third group will come in. And so somebody can make use of, of that entrance. And, you know, based on the proximity of where it is to certain terrain pieces or, you know, where the objectives might be or the treasure tokens or whatever you're trying to fight over for that round, that placement's going to be pretty important. Now, a couple other features here, you can see this kind of coffin here. There's certain terrain features that could theoretically damage a uh, player. So you have these kind of tombs and other little features like that so you don't want to stand too close to them but that can you know uh, make the positioning pretty important here's another example of that one there uh, then you have also these these walls here so typically this is a solid wall there um, but then you can have a collapsed wall like that so that can kind of clear space and i should say there's two other boards that you can get that don't come in this box set that have different layouts, quite different layouts actually. Um, so, but all of this terrain that you see here is gonna interact uh, with them. So really kind of the key takeaway with this system here and this kind of new mode is you have some of these terrain features that you can interact with more on a game level. And you can actually like knock through walls and create these and bust those down and try to jump over the pits. And there's some other special abilities and stuff that you can interact with uh, in the environment that's very specific to this. And then you have sort of a little bit more, not dungeon crawly thing, but you know, the indoor part of it where you're kind of creeping around walls and setting up choke points and stuff like that. That's just a kind of a different flavor than if you're playing in an outdoor scenario, we're kind of jumping off catwalks and so on. They each kind of have their own flavor and sensibility there. But that's pretty much it there as far as kind of the components and the general flavor of, of how the game works. So let's kind of go up to my talking head there and we'll kind of give you a little bit of a review and my breakdown of my thoughts. Okay, so that was a real general overview of everything that you get in the box and the components, some of the different game modes and things like that. I'm gonna skip the three pillars of review that I normally do. Uh, like I said, I've got a review already down, uh, link in the description there. Uh, so I've talked about the gameplay quite a bit. And if you watched about a month ago, I did my top 10 skirmish games of all time, and this was in my top five. So I really do enjoy this system. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorites. And I've, I've actually discussed it with a lot of folks in my comments, and then also over on the Blackjack Legacies channel, in terms of what is the best uh, rule set that Games Workshop has ever put out. It seems like a lot of folks really think that Warcry is their best rule set. Uh, although a lot of folks also seem to say the Middle Earth uh, combat game, which I've never played, is really good too. Um, but anyway, that's another conversation. So I really, the point is that I really do enjoy this game. I think it's a great system. Um, and as terms, as far as what you get in this box, it's kind of a mixed bag because the original box set was so good, the first starter set. Uh, you got so much terrain in that. You got the two war bands. You got the kind of the NPC monsters and demons and stuff like that that could come in and so on. Uh, but you kind of had just kind of the one style of play. Whereas this one, you get the above ground terrain and you get also the dungeon terrain. So terrain wise, you're kind of in the same ballpark in terms of the amount of stuff you get. Um, but you get a little bit more in terms of the variety of, of the game modes in this box. And I really do enjoy the underground game mode. It adds a nice different sensibility uh, 
to the game with the, just the doorways, the closed doors, the open doors, the pits, the traps, the bridges, uh, you know, in terms of traps like the, you know, the undead traps or the undead try to come and do damage to you and stuff like that. So that kind of positional sort of variety uh, to the game is really cool. And they did a really good job of it. And like the different objectives and twists and everything like that really work well. And it really makes the games very, very interesting in terms of, you know, the mechanics and how you play. I think it's really cool like that. Now, the one thing that is really just, it's a disappointment and, and it's almost coming into where the price comes in. I don't usually typically like to talk about price of a game to value because it's such a nebulous thing in terms of a board game because you can find a game that costs you $10 and gives you tons of fun and hours of fun. And you can find another game that has a lot more components and stuff and strategy and it's $50 and it gives you a ton of fun and everything, but it is in a different way. So it's hard to kind of compare it's really comparing apples to oranges. But in terms of this, like I can almost see where they missed in terms of getting you to that level of quality. And so it's gonna kind of come down to, if you have the money to get it, then I would get it because I think it's really good. But it also, I, th I have to look at it with a little bit of a side eye because it just kind of barely touches on a lot of things where I think would have made the price point a little bit more warranted. Uh, because it is like $200 plus or something in uh, MSRP, um, you know, before discounts and all that stuff. Because the catacombs part of it actually sort of ties into the larger Age of Sigmar narrative, especially with the Shadow Stalkers, in terms of what's going on with the Marathi, Broken Realm storyline, and all that kind of stuff. But it really doesn't even address it. And the stuff that's there is just kind of there. Like it just sort of happens happenstance that it sort of syncs up with it. Now I'm sure they planned it of course because there's stories in the Broken Realms things that tie back to this but that's not really that big of a deal but my point is they really could have leaned into that and developed that further and make this a real kind of pivot point or something like that for that storyline. It really had you kind of uh, you know immerse yourself a little bit better and more and I don't know what that would be. In my head, that would be like fleshing out a lot of these quest lines. So you have these faded quests, which are kind of here or there, and then you have a couple of quests specific for each of the warbands that come in this. That's cool, but the expansion that the, uh, the Tomo Champions expansion really kind of just dug in there and let, gave you a lot of narrative tools to uh, play a cool campaign. I would have liked to seen something like this because if you look at these books, I mean, this is just, it's a terrible example, but if you look at the two books, this one's, you know, good and thick. It's a couple hundred pages, you know, 150 pages. And then you have the Catacombs book, which is skinny, and it's just, just over 60 pages. So I think they could have used the space in this book to flesh out some kind of linear story or something that you could jump in and be a part of and and do something a little bit interesting and neat and and just a, a little bit of a twist on the whole way that the campaign works in Warcry, which I really like. Again, it's in my top five. I like how they give you that sort of plug and play. You know, I'm on my quest, you're on your quest. Sometimes we're gonna meet and converge in the middle. One, maybe I'll play one of your convergence quests or you'll play one of mine and so on. And the way that that whole system works is awesome. I love it. But it seems to me, when I look at this and then look at the value of this box versus the original box, I would have expected a little bit more, not in terms of like stuff in the box, because I think it's about there. You get two war bands in both of them. You get about the same amount of terrain, you know, split across two game modes. And maybe that's a little bit of a buff in this case, a little bit of a plus you know, in this box versus this original starter box. We don't get any NPC, you know, minions, but that's, yeah, whatever. But I think they could have fleshed out some other things here and really leaned into this. Instead, it just feels like a kind of a fire and forget kind of thing with this, which is, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I think they could have fleshed, fleshed out a lot more quest lines, maybe ones for each of the different factions that you can play in this, a lot more specific things, something to kind of like tie it together, tie it back into Broken Realms and that kind of thing. That just feels like a missed opportunity. Um, I mean, it is kind of toolboxy by nature, but I, I, I think that would have been really kind of a neat thing to do and really kind of maybe set up the beginning of a larger storyline. Anyway, there's a lot they could have done. I could probably go on for a while about it. And the other thing is, one of the cool things about this outdoor terrain and some of the other terrain boxes that they've come out with for it is there are ways to kind of mix and match 
that terrain. So you have your kind of catwalky ruined terrain with kind of this decrepit forest terrain or um, like graveyard uh, tomb terrain. And you have those separate things you can go play there, but then there's also cards that you can get to kind of mix all that stuff together. So it gives you a ton of variety. But they don't really carry any of this into that larger world that they've created. There's no real mixing here of the terrain and all that stuff. And you don't even get any cards in the box to set you up to do that. It give you like a handful of scenario objectives and victory conditions and twists and all that stuff in the book. But they don't give you any cards. They don't give you any kind of like player aids and cheat sheets or anything like that to, because you get some new abilities when you play in the dungeon that you can do that all, when you play on a dungeon map that you can only do there and so on. So there's no other player aid. So it's like when you get to that certain level of price point, I, th I think there should be an extra level of care and sort of polish on top of that. So when you are getting like a premium product like this, you feel like you're getting a premium product. And that's where like it just kind of falls short. So it's tricky because you can't get the original starter set anymore. And like this is, if you wanted to jump in and you've got like a lot of stuff, like this is a great, this is where I'm kind of coming to, the, to that like dual thought about it. I think this is a good price, like if you can afford that. Um, because you get the two warbands, you get the two modes, there's gonna be a lot for you to dig into. But if you already have stuff for it, which I do, um, this is not really like a must get because they are gonna release these warbands separately. I mean, you just know they are gonna have little $30 boxes or whatever they're gonna be, and you're gonna be good to go. And that's like, you get the one you like and that's it. Um, so the rest of this stuff, it doesn't really integrate enough back into the uh, the existing lines you know there's not enough mixing or anything and there, there could have been some kind of crossover and then in terms of like the narrative part of it you know and the kind of the, the the catacombs part of it it just kind of feels like a cool game mode that's just a different one of those terrain boxes so it's almost like this is a big glorified terrain box which you get some starter warbands and stuff but it doesn't take the game to enough of a level it's kind of like a version 1.5 or something Right, where you have, okay, you've got the new underground mode. Cool, that's it. And then it's gone. And then, you know, there's a couple of boards you can pick up. But it would have been really cool if they kind of leaned into that. And again, I'm really hitting at it because of the price point. Because I think if it was cheaper, like it was 150 or something, which is about the ballpark of the other one, you know, it's like $50 difference. I mean, I don't know. See, price is such a tricky thing. But looking at what they've done here, it's just like a new terrain set and a new mode with some other game options, and that's it. And it's also a star set. But I think they they really could have made this kind of expand the Warcry universe in terms of the narrative and everything. So I've kind of beat up on it, but I did want to kind of showcase and everything. Definitely go take a look at the old review if the mechanics seem interesting to you. And if you're not, if you, I, I doubt you're even watching this video if you don't already end the game, but. I would say if you are, this is a pretty decent starter spot and you're gonna get a lot of play out of it, like hours and hours, honestly, of play out of this. But it's just, there's a couple of misses, right? And it's it's simple as maybe they could have had cards and player aids and had an updated rule book with a little bit of stuff in there and not even just the errata and the FAQ, they could have had other modes or rules or advanced modes or you know whatever other kind of things that they could have like reinvested into the system with. Um, other than that, so I just want to highlight this because it's a cool system. It's really fun. I have a lot of fun playing this. Uh, played it quite a bit actually over the last, well, not the last year because still in lockdown, kind of, sort of. And then, but you know, the year prior to that, <laughs> really played a lot of it, a couple of tournaments and things like that, and really had a lot of fun with it. So I recommend the system overall. This is a little bit on the high end for the pricing. I think they could have done a lot more with it. So hopefully they, they will kind of keep come back to this though. So sorry for the kind of ramble. It's kind of all over the place, but that's kind of where I'm at um, with recommending the box set. Great system, but I'm not sure about this box. Thanks.